Welcome back to Investor Intel. Today we have a new project to talk about in a very hot metal. We're with John Lee from Prophecy. John, welcome to Investor Intel. Uh, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, vanadium is one of the hottest metals out there, and you have what appears to be a large vanadium deposit. Oh, yes, Peter. Uh, vanadium prices is bottom in 2016, and uh, this year it's really uh, taken off. We believe it's in the third inning. And it's a metal that has attracted uh, the investments from the likes of Robert Freeland and the OI Mind Finance, all those uh, billion dollar individuals and institutions. What's driving, the, what's driving the demand for vanadium? Yeah, Peter, vanadium has always been around. It has traditional use in the steel rebar industry. But recently, it's really caught on this niche of, of vanadium batteries. And uh, it is uh, akin to lithium batteries, except it's used and um, primarily designed and engineered for large-scale utility storage batteries, for, for utility grid right, power. Right. John, I understand that utility-grade vanadium batteries are of interest also. Why is that? Uh, the uh, vanadium redox battery flow battery has recently gathered a lot of momentum. And the key is to do with explosive growth in the renewable energy generating capacity, namely specifically solar and wind. Uh, today, solar and wind generating capacity amount to over 700 gigawatts. That's the equivalent of 70 Bruce Power nuclear power plants or 70 Hoover Dam hydro plants. Okay. And the numbers come from next less than 100 gigawatts seven years ago. So you're looking at 700 percent in growth, but unfortunately, 30 percent, up to 50 percent of the time in parts of China, the wind and solar energy gone uh, um, unused because they're unpredictable in nature. Uh, so you thought that the, but, unfortunately, but the, the interesting point here today is that the utility scaled grid batteries only amount to two gigawatts. That's the less than 3% of this renewable generator capacity. There is a lot of room to catch up and uh, authorities in this, in this space, such as the green tech, um, have predicted um, you know, more than double-digit growth on a yearly basis. You could have 500 to 700% growth in the next few years in this grid-scale batteries. Very exciting space. There's not a dominant leader right now, and we are positioning, and we're seeing Vanadian as it's been having a very bright future in capturing the market share of, of, that, of, that, of that space because of the unique nature of the scalability and the, and the long life cycle of Vanadian batteries to match uh, the life cycles, to complement the life cycles of renewables, of wind and solar. So you're saying that the utilities could generate electricity off peak and release it from the battery on peak or during periods when solar and wind aren't functioning. Exactly. And these Vanadian batteries can go 8 to 10 hours discharge at a time. Again, in terms of the utility demand and the demand cycle, fits much better, much more suitable than its lithium counterpart. Okay. So you found a project down in Nevada. I love Nevada as a mining district, but I didn't know they had vanadium. Well, Peter, you're right. Nevada is being consistently ranked by the Fraser Institute, a well-known Canadian think tank as uh, the fourth place for best place for mining investment in the world and is easily the best place to do mining business in North America. Um, the project is situated in northeastern Nevada specifically and is the Battle Mountain region where 80% of the gold in the United States come from today. And it's uh, really what I call the 90210 premier zip code for, for mining developments. Uh, historically, there is some lithium and vanadium and rare earth in Nevada. It's just not as prevalent as gold. Okay. How close to the – you have Battle Mountain there in Florida Mountain. Love Lock, where O.J. Simpson was in prison for eight years. <laughs> uh, Barrick is there up towards Winnemucca. Roughly, where are you located? Mm, the project's name is Jubilini. It's located in the south portion, southern portion of Battle Mountain region. Okay. Uh, 25, kilo, 25 miles south of Eureka. And you look at about only 120 kilometer, 120 miles north, southwest. Cortez is 120 miles northwest from Chibilini. And, and uh, you have uh, also Newmont, uh, Ken Ross. They're all within 200 miles from Chibilini. You access, access it through Reno or maybe fly into Salt Lake and drive down? Uh, either way, you're correct. Okay, and good you access. go from Salt Lake. It's about a three-hour drive. So you're up in the north end, you're near Winnemucca, 
to me, Winnemucca is the Timmins of Nevada. <laughs> right? It's a mining railway town. It's a uh, roughly the same population. Good mining infrastructure. So you're in a good place. Oh, yes. So let's talk oh, can, about Oh, can I ask better? I mean, the, 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 the people that, that, that would be responsible for permittability is the same folks that are permitting the mega mines. Uh, very transparent and very professional. We couldn't ask for a better per, uh, partner in, in terms of permitting. Now, Prophecy picked up this asset relatively recently, right? Yes. Uh, the company, Peter, has been around for, uh, over, for over eight years. I was the founder. And uh, we're listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Uh, we have other assets in the past. There are tier one assets we still own, but in the wrong zip code, in the wrong jurisdiction, in, in Bolivia, in Mongolia. And earlier 2017, we said, hey, look, it's time to come, it's time to come home. And we focus exclusively looking for new projects, uh, Vanadium projects in North America. And Peter, what we did is we went from the top down. We looked at all the interesting Vanadium projects in North America, and we picked up what we believe is the best project. Uh, bar none. And since then, we have been focusing on this project solely. And we started looking for vanadium projects where vanadium was about $4 a pound in early 2017. And vanadium since then has uh, more than tripled to, to the high of 13 Now it's settling back to about $10 a pound right now. So this is called the Gibellini vanadium project. When did Prophecy buy Gibellini? Mm, yes, the project is acquired through a leasing model. It's a 20-year lease and it can be renewable at a 10-year increment. And we uh, began negotiating the project in January. We officially closed the transaction in June, five months ago. Right, and there was a credit facility taken out in relation to that, but you've recently done an equity raise to wipe out the debt, correct? Mm, yes, yeah, just talk briefly about the share structure, Peter. Uh, the company had a hundred to one rollback uh, in 2016. Right now, it's a very, very clean uh, structure. Six million shares outstanding, of which the management and uh, key um, uh, close associates own 50 percent of the stock. I myself, I had to put in three million dollars uh, personal cash investment in the company, and have been supporting the company in the last two and a half years through the thick and thin. And recently, the company closed. Um, uh, the credit facility with myself, and uh, right now is debt free. We close a six point six point four million dollar financing, well cashed up for all the uh, programs uh, designed for two thousand and eighteen, and at the same time looking for additional um, listings in North America and in Asia to broaden our investor reach. Peter, so the project itself at Gibellini. Let's quickly take a look at that. Have you done drilling there? Well, Peter, uh, Ghibellini has had, it's a quite a well-known name on the streets in Toronto. And uh, the previous operator, the name is American Vanadium. They had raised over $20 million and uh, operated the project since two years 2000 and gave it in 2016. Through that six years, uh, there's a $10 million roughly into pro that gone into project development. Not just drilling, it's about 20 30,000 meters of drilling, but also metallurgical study, full flash feasibility study. And the other 10 million, Peter, has actually gone into permitting. So they were literally about a quarter mile. They were, they were down to their last quarter mile to getting this project fully permitted. Wow. And the feasibility study was 2010, 2011? 2011. It was 2011. So I'd imagine, Unfortunately, part, I'd imagine <laughs> that part of your work then would be freshening that data and updating the study. Yes, Peter. Uh, just briefly, the project, as I said, the American Vanadia, especially in the resource industry and commodity market, it's all about it's all about timing. And American Vanadia has a great management team. Picked up this great project in the early going, uh, but unfortunately, the road of Vanadium price down from twelve dollars to two dollars and fifty cents, two thousand sixteen. The feasibility study was published in two thousand eleven when Vanadium was eleven dollars a pound. And it demonstrated excellent economics. I'm not at liberty to discuss because of historical numbers, but the uh, the the, uh, the the report is available for uh, at CDAR if you search American Vanadium. I mean, the project was robust enough with well over uh, double digit returns uh, in IRR that enabled that company to raise over 20, 30 million dollars in total, and um, did all the wonderful studies and permitting, and unfortunately had to give them the project. One of the priorities, Peter, going forward for Prophecy is you, so you're right in updating the feasibility study. And, uh, and within that process, it's a two-stage process, two-step process. First step is to update the resource numbers. 
And once the resource numbers are updated, then we're moving on to updating the feasibility study. But we do believe okay. that, Peter, uh, just on that note, is that the feasibility study carried out in 2011 is still very, very relevant today because the price assumption used in 2011 is the same as the price of vanadium uh, that is today. Okay. So while there are some elements of inflation, but there are some other elements as costs has come down, such as financing costs. So the, the, the milestones this year will be updating the resource estimate for 2018? Uh, from, uh, the, uh, one of the key priorities is that uh, updating, the uh, updating the feasibility. The resource estimate was published already, so we're on an accelerated path. And uh, that news release was uh, put out in uh, November 20, just, just less than a month ago. It demonstrated an open, um, open pit deposit uh, of over 120 million pounds of vanadium in measure indicator category. Wow. So it's a modest deposit, but it, as I said, it, it works very advanced. And then the other side of, uh, you know, besides the feasibility engineering work, the other half of our major effort is to um, initiate, restart the permitting process. Um, and just briefly on that, as I said, mentioned earlier, over $10 million and five years of work has gone into permitting. One thing good about Nevada is the, the process is very transparent, but the downside is it's not for, for, for faint-hearted. Faint it's usually it's a loan due process and the call, it, it, doesn't, it, it could be quite costly. You're looking at typically five years and $10 million. This very, very fortunate for us, is, as I said, about 80% of the work is already being, being carried out. And of the three major stages, the first two stages, which is the environmental baseline study and a plan of operations, both being completed and accepted by the Bureau of Land and Management. So potentially we can represent ourselves into the last stage, which is the EIS process. And that will, that will last maybe one to two years and, and, then, and then a two to three million dollar affair. So we're sort of putting our team together and um, officially going to enter into that process in 2018. So the feasibility study and the permitting school both going to go in parallel and that's something we're very, very excited about. John, all of that is fascinating. We will be watching the project. We'll be watching to see the milestones this year. And best of luck in Nevada. Maybe we can have a beer in Winnemucca one day. <laughs> so I pleasure, Peter. Hope you get back again soon. Update you with the progress. Thank you for your time.